He joins us to take a look at the S&P. And uh, firstly, let's uh, talk uh, uh, short term KG, kind of like uh, the response here today post PAL. I mean, look, uh, we're going to make a mountain out of a mole here, here, but it seems like we're still kind of rolling around these same levels. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, the market's really boring. That's really what you're trying to, <laughs> trying to say right now, right? It's, it's really boring. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're going to probably continue to see some compression until we have that CPI print on Thursday. We kind of talked about this yesterday. Uh, you are seeing some institutional flows going into the put side, maybe trying to hedge some downside risk. I know that you shared a note with me earlier uh, today regarding potential risk on the horizon from one investment bank uh, that is uh, a little bit concerned when it comes to the, the CPI number here. But when yeah. we're looking at today's flow, going into the close, it's once again, just that compression, but just kind of note, we're hitting the lower end of our, uh, you know, negative gamma level here is the 5575 area. And all day we've been kind of buying the lows, selling the rips that has been the trend over the last week. Right now we're at that low. So if we are going to see kind of this buying activity kind of take place in the, the remainder of the, the session here, it's going to happen at this level. If we do break here, Oliver, uh, there is a trader that's looking at 55.60. So that we're around a 16 point move to the downside here. Uh, and from an upside standpoint, not really seeing the flows yet. That really signifies that we're going to have a melt up into the close. Now, obviously, that can change, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Buying, buying the, the dips here, selling the rips, compression around 15 point ranges that we're seeing on an intraday basis. Okay. All right. Now, um, hey, just boy, the feel, you know, like we've got. We talked earlier with Mike Block, who's got this new AI, you know, trading uh, tool that he's using, and they've built and sounds smart as heck. But I can't uh, hesitate to give my own feel, right? It just feels like things are just we're getting so quiet and so kind of not coiled, but complacent in a way. I mean, the fact that you've got this massive dispersion within the market, so much massed from the very slow, steady tide of the AI trade at the top. So when will the options kind of tell us if we're breaking in some direction or the other, KG? So if we're going to have a break to the upside here, 5,600 is going to be that key area of resistance for this week. And, and yesterday we kind of talked about that 5590-ish level. And, you know, obviously I just moved up around 10 points. Not a huge deal, but that's going to be your key level to try to break through this week. If we get to 5610, that's where you can kind of have that melt up type of scenario to the upside. Downside, Oliver, it's really, really tough. 55.45 is kind of the area in the sand that we have right now. But there's not a lot of protection that's sitting down there. So you mm. could actually have this free fall type of moment if we have a surprising hot print when it comes to CPI. And that's where we could see these downside moves. It just has not happened yet because, once again, everything's bullish. If you, if you have no news and you have very light volume and price action continue goes to the upside, then that's, that's overall bullish for this market. Until we actually have some volume stepping in, we have some sellers stepping in right now, that's where we could actually see the market kind of uh, turn right now. And we're just not seeing that. And we probably won't see that until we actually have some fundamental data, some hardcore data, either in earnings or in the macro side that tells us that something might be wrong or mispriced. Okay, uh, so that's an important thing that we did talk about yesterday. I'm glad you reiterated that, which is that there seems to be more preparation to the upside and that that kind of skew has shifted pretty significantly from a week ago where it seemed like it was a little bit more kind of balanced. Now it's kind of like assuming that it, things don't break down. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of bullish activity that's taking place for these uh, institutional traders here. What they're really doing and what we are following here when we come up with these levels is just these positions that they have around their core portfolio. So if these institutional traders are actually moving up their call strikes that are out of the money to the upside, that's ultimately bullish for the market. That could kind of relieve some pressure for dealers. If they're moving up their puts, uh, that also is going to be bullish. Once you kind of see the dispersion of maybe the market stalling out and you start seeing call flows getting lower and lower when it comes to the strikes or maybe even close to at the money that's when you know that we might have a near-term pullback in this market and we just have not seen that type of flow yet i think everybody right now is kind of waiting for the data and kind of looking around and saying okay what's going to be the next catalyst for us to move to the upside here or the downside and right now there hasn't been i mean bears just don't want to play right now even when you're looking at the, the put flow it's so unbalanced to the call side here that even the 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 leveraged bears don't even want to try to step their you know foot in the water uh to try to catch a downside move 
Mm. Yeah, all right. Uh, so we are kind of skewed. It's not just my, my gut, then. It is kind of getting a little bit yeah. more lopsided. Uh, Mike, at the top of the show, seemed to believe that, uh, you know, we – could be moving based on September odds if they don't go perfectly uh, with inflation this week. So, all right, uh, it seems like the conclusion generally from the dealer positioning stuff is that they're ready for upside, not so much ready for downside at this point. Yeah, definitely. And as we are going into the close, we kind of talked about that 55, 75 level, the level that they need to hold right now. And it appears that we are catching a little bit of a bid going into the close. That's really what you want to see for a start of a melt up. Now, once again, those key ingredients, communication services and semiconductors are going to have to lead the way here. But if we are going to see a pretty decent close, that's going to be uh, the, the the things that we're going to need. And then the balance level, because we highlighted this yesterday, is going to be 55.83. So if the dealers want to be pretty much flat for the day, that could be an area or a magnet where the market does close. Okay, 5583. All right, we haven't ventured too, too far from a lot of these key levels on a weekly basis, so it's been a pretty good guidepost uh, for us to watch these uh, sort of pins. Uh, all right, and generally the, the closes have been pretty strong for the most part. Uh, and so I feel like until that changes, uh, the market doesn't drift too far, uh, <laughs> right? I mean, like we've closed pretty solid. Like I can remember the last time we faded hard into the bell. Yeah, definitely. And when we talk about a strong close, let's also kind of quantify that too. I mean, if you see a nice eight point move to the upside in the last, let's say five minutes or eight minutes of the close, that's actually fairly strong. Those anomalies that we saw maybe a month ago where we had a close of like 35 points or it was like, yeah, it was like 30 points uh, in the last 10 minutes. Those are really not normal. So an eight point move to the upside from here would actually be fairly uh, you know, successful for the bulls. That would bring us at around 55.76. Uh, 5586. I'm sorry. Uh, if we did have that pump, so that that would be considered a melt up win uh, for the remaining for the remainder of the session. Okay. All right. Uh, good stuff. Uh, thanks. Uh, helpful as always, Mr. Kevin Green, our senior markets correspondent here on the Schwab Network.